Hello, my name is Jeff Foster and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's Data Center Product Group. This video is part of a series that is intended to show some of the unique advantages made possible by Cisco's server offering called the Unified Computing System or UCS for short. This video will show the viewer the details of IMC Supervisor, a new platform management solution for Cisco standalone C-Series and E-Series servers, providing features including platform monitoring and fault aggregation, platform inventory collection, KVM launch capabilities, firmware management, and email alerting. Delivered as a virtual appliance, IMC Supervisor communicates with endpoints via the IMC XML API and supports standalone C-Series M3 and M4 servers, as well as E-Series M1 and M2 servers. The system can scale up to 1,000 managed endpoints, and core features include inventory collection and reporting, system health status or monitoring of the endpoints, virtual KVM launcher with power controls, firmware inventory collection and management, and call home or email alerting for critical faults. Let's take a look at some of these features. IMC Supervisor monitors endpoints and provides reports of fault data both globally as well as filtered by group. Additionally, users may drill down to an individual server to see fault status as well as log files including cell and IMC log files. There is a dashboard viewer available for at-a-glance views of current fault status. The system also collects and reports platform inventory, including but not limited to processors, memory, PCI adapters, and storage controllers, as well as provides a single point for collection of fault, Cisco IMC, and system event log files. Supervisor provides users a single place to launch the web UI interface, to launch KVM console, to perform power management, including power on, power off, power cycle, and reset of managed nodes. It also provides call home email alerting capabilities, where critical faults can be reported to users at the time they're received by IMC supervisor through email notification. This will help to speed alerting of critical faults on managed systems. The system also facilitates firmware updates whereby users may specify either NFS or SIF shares where firmware can be located or users can download from Cisco.com directly to the web server running on IMC Supervisor and facilitate non-interactive firmware updates of managed systems, allowing for streamlined firmware management across our C-Series and E-Series platforms. The system also supports grouping and tagging functions. On the left, you'll see a number of groups uh, where we have assigned systems. And then on the right, you'll see the tagging feature, uh, which will provide metadata information about the systems in that particular group. We support a number of different options for managed system discovery. Uh, you can identify a system by uh, an individual IP, or we support uh, discovery via an IP range a uh, subnet mask range uh, through a comma separated list or a CSV file. Discovery profiles that are set up in the system can be run or rerun at any point in the future. Well, let's go ahead and look at IMC Supervisor in action. First thing we're going to take a look at is monitoring inventory and KVM launch with IMC Supervisor. Let's go ahead and flip over to the interface and log in. And we're presented here with the main screen uh, upon login. Across the top, you'll notice a number of uh, menus. Down the left-hand side, you'll see a number of user-defined groups. And then we've got information on the monitored systems uh, in the main window. So we can see 
uh, fault listing, uh, server health information, firmware version, server models, and then information on the power state, as well as a table that uh, highlights the number of servers being managed and the number of servers with critical faults. So if we go now to the second tab, uh, Rack Servers, we're presented with a table that includes information like product ID, host name, serial number, and a number of other attributes. I can select on the Export Report tab, and I can export this data as PDF, CSV, or XLS for import into another application. I'll go ahead and close this. And let's go now and look at the Faults tab. And the Faults tab is going to report all of the faults across all of the systems under management. So we can see here that there's a single critical fault, a few major faults, a minor fault. Uh, so this is across all of the, the monitored systems. Click on now More Reports. And in the More Reports tab, I actually get a listing or larger view of each of the five graphs that were presented in that initial screen. So if I want to, uh, to get a larger view of one of those graphs, this is the place to, to go get that. Now let's go ahead and look at one of the, the groups. So we'll go ahead and click on Building 2 here. And I'm presented with the same charts I was presented upon login. Uh, but the information here is filtered to just those uh, systems that are identified as part of the Building 2 group. I'll go ahead and click on Rack Servers. And again, we get a table with all of the Rack Servers and, and the uh, relevant information. I'll go single click on a 220 here, and I'm presented across the top with actions. So if I want to take action on launching a GUI, KVM console, or power, I can do that. I can also reach the same menu if I right click on that particular system. I'm presented with the same menu options. Let's go ahead here, and, and maybe I want to launch a GUI. So I want to go in and, and access the web UI of, of this particular SimC. So I can do that uh, just by clicking that uh, Launch GUI or Launch GUI button. I can also launch a KVM window. So I'll go here and launch a KVM console. And we're going to use the XML API in the background to facilitate the download of the JNLP file. So it still does require that Java is installed on the station that you are uh, launching this from. But it does not require you to go into each of the individual endpoints if you want to uh, launch a, a KVM window. Uh, so that KVM window is going to give you uh, capabilities all, that you can perform on the system. So uh, if you want to record a KVM session or chat uh, with other administrators viewing the same KVM session, perform some power option, um, all of these options are available here from the top window in the KVM console. So it's a, it's a great task, especially if you're going to launch multiple KVM windows. Go ahead and double click now into this C420 and take a look at uh, inventory for the system. So I'm presented with summary data uh, for the system. Uh, and I can go across the top and click on all of the major subsystems, including processors, Memory, I get a, a view of the individual DIMMs installed in the system. Power supplies, I get the state of those, so on and so forth. So I get a, a very granular view of the inventory. Uh, down to the Cisco Virtual Interface card, I can actually double click even further into the Cisco VIC and get information on this card, uh, the external interfaces, as well as the VMFX, uh, VHBAs, and VNIX that are configured uh, on the uh, VIC. So if I go back and select the Rack server again, I'll, I'll continue on taking a look at the inventory. Uh, I get uh, the ability to drill down on storage adapters as well. So I can drill down into this LSI card get information about the controller, uh, the physical drives that are installed in the system, the virtual drives that are installed in the system. Uh, so it gives me a very granular view of uh, VIC and storage. And then the last hardware item is the TPM. So I don't have a TPM installed. 
I can also view information about faults on the system at, at present. I can view the Cisco IMC log, which uh, contains audit information uh, about the system, log in, log out, performing uh, action on the system. I can also view the system event log or cell and clear the log files from this screen. And I get a view of the fault history. So in this case, I was running some tests just to uh, generate some fault history to show that historic data. And then finally, technical support data. So if I want to upload a technical support file to Cisco or use it for some other purpose, I can facilitate the, uh, the generation and upload of that file directly from IMC Supervisor. Let's go ahead and go back to the inventory screen and we can view here a customized uh, tab report table where I can select additional attributes that I want to include in the table. So that's what we've got uh, to share with the, uh, the IMC supervisor when it comes to um, fault monitoring and aggregation, uh, system inventory, and KVM launch. Next, let's look at Cisco IMC supervisor firmware management. So we'll go uh, back to our interface, and, and again, we'll log in. And we're presented with our, our fault information that we saw last time. And this time we'll go ahead and go up to uh, building 18 and take a look at uh, rack server. And we're gonna focus in on the first rack server here. So uh, we'll go up to systems and uh, select physical accounts and the firmware upgrade tab. Go ahead and configure a firmware profile here. And there's a number of firmware profiles configured. Um, now I can select a network path uh, where I can select NFS or SIFS, uh, where I have a HU image or host update utility image out on the NFS or SIFS share uh, that I can use to facilitate the update. In this case, I'm going to uh, use the local HTTP server and create a new profile for the C220M3 for 2.03F. I'm going to load my credentials for Cisco.com. And from the platform dropdown, I'm going to select the 220. Now the system will go off and query the available images. And I'll go down and select 2.03F and initiate a download. Now I'm initiating this download to the IMC Supervisor VM itself. And we're going to go ahead and, and do some time lapse here. And we're back and we're just concluding the download of that uh, firmware image. And let's go back to physical accounts here. Go to uh, firmware upgrades and we're gonna go ahead and upgrade a system with the profile we created. We'll select the server and, and you can see here that the system has already filtered the platform type just to C220s because that's the, uh, the image uh, type that we have and we'll go ahead and select the server and submit and we've got the KVM window so you can follow along in the KVM window uh, just to see how it's progressing and, and we're going ahead and speed time up here uh, just for the purpose of this demo so as the update is progressing you'll see in the status window that status is continuing to update along with system firmware and then we'll go ahead and turn, see the viewer terminate. And the viewer termination is at the point where we reboot the IMC and we are presented now with a success of the firmware image. So we can go back to the inventory data and take a look at that platform that we updated. So we'll go back here to building 18. We'll select the rack servers. And again, the fifth system here, and you can see the firmware for that system is 2.03F. So that concludes the firmware update portion of the demo. To recap, IMC Supervisor provides a number of advantages to customers, including the use of a secure, reliable communication protocol via the IMC XML API. It enables multi-site monitoring and inventory collection of managed systems. It enables non-interactive firmware updates at scale and allows customers to initiate 
touch points with systems from a single location. Distributed server management and monitoring can be a challenge in many environments, and IMC Supervisor helps by providing a single management in interface for monitoring, inventory collection, and platform management capabilities. This ends the UCS Advantage video where we show how unique capabilities in the Cisco UCS can lead to simplified deployment models with much faster service turnaround to meet the increasing demands of the business please go to www.cisco.com slash go slash UCS for printed collateral, including a brochure that highlights the information shown in this video. Thank you.